Jim. Hey. You've got a gig tonight. I have. Oh, what's your gig? Tell me all about it. Tell okay. me about your gig. Hey, so it's a big band gig. I'm okay. playing lead alto. Lead, obviously. Expect. Obviously, yeah. down time. Yeah. As he's got to yeah. specify. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah. Oh, of course. I love playing lead alto in big bands. Oh, amazing. Well, uh, I've got some news about your uh, saxophone setup. Yes, I set it on fire! But good news is though, Jim, good news. I have stolen £1,000 from my boss's coffers. And I've put it on this wonderful card for you to pick out a brand new gigging saxophone setup for under £1,000. Hooray! So, tell me, what are you going to look for? Okay, so, you know, the obvious thing might be, you might sort of think by mistake, oh, I need to spend a lot of money on a saxophone, and then you think about the mouthpiece afterwards, but I'm going to reverse that thinking. I'm going to major on the mouthpiece mm -hmm. and get my favourite choice of reed because that is the business end, whoops, of the sound. <laughs> you nearly lost your card, oh, I nearly did, I wouldn't be able to buy anything then. So that is absolutely essential. So big band alto, I'm going to think of a nice sort of, I need warmth in the sound, but it needs to be pokey so I can like push through in those mm. solo sections. So I'm going to get a nice mouthpiece, a decent quality hard rubber mouthpiece, nice ligature reeds, and then, you know, whatever's left for a saxophone. I mean, I guess we'll find out. Let's I'm sure you'll do fine. Yeah, go on, let's go get it. Let's do it. Okay, so I've got a thousand pounds to spend. As mentioned, it's going to be really essential to get that mouthpiece business end of the setup right. So let's head straight to the mouthpiece cabinet and see what we can find. Now, it's a big band gig, and I'm thinking I've got to get a nice core sound, core sounding ebonite mouthpiece. I don't want to go into a metal piece. So a nice premium level alto piece, and I'm seeing here. Theo One is very nice, of course, but on the pricier side, as I move down the row, I am seeing Drake's. And I do like Drake mouthpieces, so this jazz one here will do very nicely for the job. So, uh, £279, Michael. Can you do a calculation? 721. 721 left to get the other bits and pieces. Okay, what should we do next? Saxophone. Let's go around to the saxophone section. So, Seven, two, one. And immediately I'm faced with our own branded Sakusu. Could be good, but let's look at some other options. Jean-Paul, I like it a lot. I think this could be a serious contender. What else have we got in this area? Trevor James, it's getting a bit pricey in terms of the budget here. And they have very nice saxophones, but I'm actually going to go back to the one I've just seen here, which is the Jean-Paul. So that's 619 for a Jean-Paul gold lacquer. What does that calculate out to? 102. 102 pounds left. What else do we need to get? We need a strap. A ligature, thank you. Okay, let's do a ligature. Okay, back over here again. Right, okay. I can already see some fancy pants ligatures, and they're very nice and all the rest of it, but we're on a budget here, so I cannot afford that kind of stuff. Let's just go safe and get a Rovner ligature. Um, just a standard dark Rovner ligature. I think that's $29.99. Do the maths. Oh, 72 and a penny. 72 and a penny left. Okay, so we got that. We need a strap. Okay, again, nothing too expensive. It's only 70 quid. I think I'm going to home in on a Rico padded strap. That is £34.90. Do the maths. 37 37 for reeds. Okay, let's head back this direction and get some reeds. Now, I'm already thinking just go with what I know, and that would be the Dario Select Jazz. Do we have any? Yes, of course we do. Dodario Select Jazz, how much are these? £34. £34? Can you do the math? We're in budget! Whee!
Right, so I can see you've picked out a setup. Yes. Uh, it looks like you've done quite well. Uh, let's start with the mouthpiece, because you said that was where you were going to be uh, most focused on. I can see you picked a Drake. Yep, yeah. So yeah, this is a Drake uh, standard jazz mouthpiece. I've had some experience with it before. It's just a lovely all round nice central sound. It's got a nice core to it, and a little bit of edge. Um, I just feel it's just going to, within the big band context of tonight, it's just going to give me that nice sound that will allow me to blend with the section. At the same time, it's got enough poke to come through and give me that sort of soloistic thing that I you see. need as well. You know, when you do solid sections, you need to poke through as well as actual solos. Of course, yeah. So this mouthpiece is bought really in consideration of exactly what you're doing tonight. Yeah, exactly. Kind of does a bit of both. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, now, the Drakes do come with a ligature, but you've yeah. decided to go with a Rovner. Yeah, I could have used the ligature with it. I find it slightly sort of flimsy little thin uh, ring ligature. I'm never quite convinced about it. And I've, I've had a lot of experience with the Rovner ligatures over the years, so I'm just going to go with what I know. It binds the reed really securely against the mouthpiece, so I'm very happy with this Rovner Dark. Amazing. Reed-wise, you've gone, played it safe, gone with something yeah. you're familiar with? Familiarity again with the reed. i played the Daddario Select Jazz reeds for many years now. This is just a three soft uh, filed reed here, so happy with that. Yeah. Lovely. Um, and OK, so uh, let's look at the saxophone yes. itself. So we've got a Jean-Paul here. So I know you were choosing saxophone second. So what was the thought process between choosing the saxophone second here? Well, it's just, oh, got to get the mouthpiece right. And, you know, this is the business end of the sound, as I say. So if you've got this blowing really nicely, then the key thing after that is just to have a saxophone that operates really well, really functionally. Um, after all, this is, this, this is just a tool, and it needs to, to make sure all the pads are sealing, that it's operating correctly. Um, yes, you can start talking about all the sort of nuances of the tone of the instrument, and that is all very important. But when you're on a budget of a thousand pounds, you've absolutely got to get this bit right because this is where the majority of the sound is being formed. So with the saxophone itself, the way I feel about Jean Paul's is it's a really good budget student instrument. It just does everything really nicely. It's actually got a really nice sort of warm, vintagey sound, which is, sets it apart from some of the other similar sort of priced uh, student instruments. So I've always had a, um, a sort of soft spot for the Jean Paul Alto. So yeah, that's, that's the thinking. Amazing, I think you've done really, really well there. Well, thank you. <laughs> That sounds really, really great. It does everything you want it to do. And for your gig tonight, you're going to sound great. You know what? I'm pretty happy with it as well. I think, you know, this is really random when you just have to get everything together in like five minutes like we did, and then it sounds reasonably OK. Exactly. I'm actually quite looking forward to the gig now. That's good. Well, um, the thing is, obviously, long term, you would will not want to be using a student horn for this sort of gig. But sometimes you've only got a thousand pounds and you can sound as good as this. Yeah. Good news for Jim, though, is that I didn't actually burn his setup, so he's still got all of his stuff available for you to Just get your tin. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, which we are making videos now every Wednesday. I think I'm going to use it in the gig anyway. You're going to use it in the gig anyway. See, now he can't stop thinking about this setup now. Uh, every Wednesday, you can see myself, George, Jim, and the rest of us here at sax.co.uk making videos for you. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions of what you would do with a thousand pounds in our store, please pop that in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.